and welcome back folks, welcome back to episode, welcome rather, to episode 2 of Let's Play Grim Dawn. I'm Firm, and when last we left off we played a character who had been uh, infected with like an entity that's invading called the Ethereum I think they were called. We were due to be hung but because it passed away from us they let us out of the noose and the captain of the local town to win his trust and to gain acceptance from the villagers asked us to go and work out what it was that's reanimating corpses in the local area. So we're going to do that. We got a few early levels and we're about to get another one now. And we're working towards an ability that would let us hit more than one enemy with our five more points with our um, double-handed weapon which I feel will be great for doing a lot of damage and we can wear those now and they're a big upgrade so we're gonna work towards that first quest now um, yeah there's not a lot to really say about what we're gonna do each episode of this it's gonna be much the same smash a load of enemies into bloody pieces like that get more gear get more uh, abilities as we level up and just generally become a bit of a badass now I don't actually know where we oh we need to go into the cave under Boreal Hill apparently I'm sort of checking the map every now and again to make sure we're not missing anything but eh uh, I don't really think it matters too much if we do. This isn't like a big 100% playthrough. This is more just uh, do, well, basically what I want to do. Particularly where the story is concerned though, we're going to be trying to focus on getting that done as much as possible in this series. Um, but it is a veteran slash hardcore character, so I have one life. And if I die, it's over. And this is hardcore difficulty, so it's going to be rather rough. But I'm enjoying the game so far. I wonder if I missed anything down here. Don't think so. Nope. It feels good to be playing something different though for a change, because as I mentioned previously, um, all I've really played recently has been like Tony Hawk's 1 and 2 remake, bits of Skate 3 through a PS3 emulator, um, and then like uh, lots of old school RuneScape. So just playing something a little bit different is nice. Hopefully this really does get me back into playing like proper gaming titles again. So we're looking for a cave on the Boreal Hill. Well, I can't see any such cave at the moment. The difficulty hasn't really been there yet, but I will say from the test I did to see if this was the sort of game I'd want to play, it felt like it ramped up extremely quickly. Which, from what I remember of like Diablo's harder difficulties and like hardcore modes, it was much the same on there. So, yeah, it's going to take a lot if I want to get through the game. But we are on technically the easiest difficulty just with the veteran modifier added to it. There are two difficulties you unlock for, I'd assume, completing the previous ones. Poison effects look really good. I'm quite impressed with the presentation of this game actually. It really nails that classic like Diablo-esque style to it. But it does look suitably, I guess, high res for what it is. Oh god for being it hardware. What is that? It's a level 4 Rift Scourge. So like the next level up from these. Uh, all the older Diablo games had like variants of the same enemy that would just get progressively stronger 
the further through the game you went, so this doesn't surprise me at all. It's like a chest run there. Ah, it's something. So, just to confirm from the previous episode, we definitely have got a lightning modifier on our weapon now. Um, when you swing it, sometimes you can see it hit an enemy. Uh, not hit an enemy, you can see like a blue flash coming off the enemies that I'd assume indicates the lightning damage. Which is good, because I'm sure every little bit of DPS in this game is going to be essential. Calm down, where are you from? The way back should be clear now. So we're going to let him go back through a rift gate. And we'll go and talk to him when we go back to finish up the quest we've got to do. I'd assume this is where we need to go over here. Yeah, we've not been distraction at all yet. And that is definitely where we need to go, I think. Or is that the teleport back to the first area? Yeah, that's just the, like, blaze thing that'll teleport me back to the start. That's useful, at least we've got a shortcut back here now. Again, another, I know I keep mentioning Diablo, but another staple of that series. That drum beat in the background is great. Just get that little damage over time buff going. So that looks like the, that's the location we've got to go. Um, Whoa. I do just want to try and finish exploring this little area first. And that's another level up. Uh, we need three more points. So next level up, we'll be able to get an ability that will give us... Um, uh, allow us to hit multiple enemies with one swing of our weapon. Oh wow. Oh no. Oh, that hit hard. I want to deal with these long range enemies if I can first. Just get that damage ticking away at them. And again, and again. you off because you're a straggler. See that? Damage over time ability really does tick away after a while. This rotting soldier is a pain in the ass though. He's hitting kind of hard. Oh god, he is as well. I need my constitution just to fill my health back up. This is why we need the ability to hit multiple enemies at once, really. Because when you get a crowd like that, I would just like to plow into them and just, yeah, hurt them. Okay, so the quest locator is at Boreal Hill. I don't think I want to be progressing beyond there, really. I'm gonna attack out this Aether Crystal. And then I think it seems we've killed this group of enemies, it might be wise to just go and do the quest now. No point overextending. As I said, I'll be doing a lot of like the grindy and completion stuff on a separate account off camera. 
this profile will be solely focused on just getting as far in the story as we can. Also, I've got a cup of tea to make. So we're going to enter this cave while I do so. So that didn't go so well. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's go and do this properly. So, the second we've come through this door, we've just been mobbed. Thankfully, we have got a couple of health items. The source of the dead is near. Let's deal with this crystal. Oh, God. Yeah, those lightning enemies really hurt. Hence why in that previous fight I said we'll attack out the range ones first. Let's pick these off one at a time if we can. Okay, let's rush in and deal with the crystal before it summons all these. That's the enemy we've got to take out over there. Now, I seem to remember someone's enemies that throw like a green thing at you. Like a green effect at you. I want to aggro him and get him over here without bringing any of his friends though. So we can just hit him with the damage over time stuff. He also heals very quickly though. So yeah, he chucks this horrible green stuff at you, we're going to be keeping out of that. Go on, throw your shit at me again. Just get a few cheeky hits him, and back away. Oh yeah, that's the thing that's going to back him up with that green shit. And as you can see from that, it does hurt. So. We're just going to take this one as slowly as we have to and keep dealing with his green spawn every time we have to. As you can see though, he has such a health pull, this guy. He really does save a lot of damage. But it's alright, we'll deal with him. Although we're getting smacked up a bit there. Let's drink a healing drink. Hit him with that damage over time. Deal with the spawn. And now I've back to wailing on him. God, this guy is so tanky. How many health drinks we got left? Just the one. Great. Of course, it doesn't help that he does heal so quickly. killing his spawns. I don't know if we do. I know that's the last healing item I've got. So the strategy now might just be to run the fuck away. I don't think we do actually get any XP for doing killing his spawns off. This might have to be the strategy now. Just kite him around and throw this shit at him. And just hope it kills off some of these guys as well. Oh god. Yeah, this is rough. And we have to remember we're on a hardcore character as well, so we can't be taking unnecessary risks, really. I 
I might have to teleport out of this one. I'm not sure if I can do it. If this is the enemy that the quest needs me to kill her. If we just let my health regen a bit, we might be able to deal with him. Because he is slowly but surely going down. Need to deal with the green guy though. I might need to go and buy some more health potions, I think. As you can see, he is healing a bit at a time as well, which isn't good. I'm not sure if this is going to be doable just by kiting him around or not, to be honest. Oh no. Yeah, we might have to teleport out of this one, folks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh no. How do I... That's how. Back to Devil's Crossing. Oh, that was rough. So we're gonna need some uh, more health potions, I think that's clear. Maybe another level as well. Let's go and find Faldis first. Where are you, Faldis? That's a very good question. Where's that trader? Oh, it's that. Come see what's left of my wares. Gonna get rid of all this stuff we're not gonna need. And we'll buy four of those. Okay, so where's this fella that we saved? I think he's inside, actually. Oh, God. I wish there was a way of just healing here, like, automatically. It probably is, I'm just too dumb to notice. Oh, we can teleport straight back into the cave. Oh, and he's still on his low health thing as well, that's good. Okay, let's lure all these over here. Grab the tunic. Oh god, that's a lot of enemies though. Jesus Christ. Let's run around now that we've got a window. Come on. It's nearly down, 300 health left. Should be alright to go down now. Tell you what, this guy's tanky as all hell. Probably been a bit liberal with health pots, but I'm well aware that I'm on uh, hardcore difficulty. And that's him dead. We're gonna finish off all the enemies in this cave, and then we're gonna go back to uh, Devil's Crossing. See what we got for all that effort. Oh, 
Oh, there's another one who wants. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look what we got. That's better. Um, okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like we've got anything else worthwhile there, but we're going to finish exploring this cave before we go back to Devil's Crossing. So far, my uh, initial impressions of this game are actually really strong as well. I think it's a very well put together game. It obviously borrows heavily from Diablo, um, but it's great for what it is. It's good fun. Um, yeah. Story, I don't know anything about yet. I'm sure in a minute we're going to go and find out the next story beat after we've dealt with these ether crystals or died in the process. Deal with this one quickly. And easy. And we've got another level up so we can test that ability that I've been waiting to unlock, which is uh, this one. We're going to put three points into it. Might as well double down on it. Now, is it passive or is it. I believe it's a passive ability as well, folks. So let's try and get them rounded up. I'm sure it said it should hit more than one enemy. Uh, let's just have a look. What's the take on it? When used with a melee weapon, the attack strikes. Multiple nearby targets attacks off of default activates off of default weapon attacks. So yeah, I think it should, but I don't know if it's like a random thing or not. But that should attack off of like just a normal ability by the looks of it. Yeah, well, that's something we'll test further anyway um, later down the line. What's this? Shrines can be cleansed by the making an offering to the gods or defeating traps trapped within the shrine, depending on the type of shrine you encounter. Okay, we'll offer that. Oh, and we got some stuff for it. Great. Okay, let's have a look what we've got for doing that. Okay, let's uh, now go back to the starting area, Devil's Crossing, and find out what the next story beat is. And then I think we'll call it a video, folks. I don't want these to be long episodes, I just want them to be fun. Looks like the map's quite big, though. So warm today, folks. Let's just sell off all this. Oh, that's how you, uh, yeah, we're going to keep base, we'll read those before we speak to the captain. Uh. Oh, so this is, yeah, I'm going to skip through these because I'll read them in my own time. Like I said, this isn't really the focus of this, um, I don't know what that's just added to it. Oh, it's a skill it adds. Yeah, um, I don't really want to get bogged down with all the law side of things in this uh, series. The dead attacks have slowed and their numbers are thinning. I take that as a sign that you've dealt with the source? I've killed the reanimator after a lot of trouble and having to come back here to restock halfway through. A creature was doing this? Disturbing. 
Thanks to your efforts, we may yet hold out here a little longer. I've sent word to the gate guard. Speak to him and he should let you in. Take some well-deserved time to rest and recover. Welcome to Devil's Crossing. Thank you. I need some time to plan our strategy. In the meantime, there are others around Devil's Crossing who could use your help. Take a moment to mingle with your fellow survivors. Kasparov, our resident scientist, is really eager to speak with you. He babbled some nonsense, but I believe he wants to talk about your connection with the Ethereals. Barnabas, our handyman, said he needed help with our water pump. When you're done assisting them, speak with me in my office inside the prison. I'll speak to them. Okay, so we now have two quests we can pick up. One here, one here. And we need to speak to Faldis as well, so let's go in here. And we'll go find Faldis. And he's given us just some random shit, really. There's plenty of people to talk to here, but we'll save that for the next episode, folks. Until then, oh, until then. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please drop me a like or something. Goodbye.